So in this presentation, I'm going to talk about um, how you can use webvitals.js, which is a JavaScript library. Um, and it will help you like target and debug certain things that will help you improve your core web vitals. So um, I'm not sure how many of us, maybe some people know what core web vitals are and some don't. So I'm going to assume that we don't know what it is. So <clears throat> core web vitals are a bunch of metrics um, that that are measured on a page that the that kind of encapsulates um, the user experience in different ways because a user can experience a page in different ways, right? First, you know, obviously how fast the page loads, um, what the, when people interact with the page, how fast it responds, if there's any kind of delays or if things shift around when while the page is actually loaded, right? These are all measured in different ways. And, and core web vitals is just a subset of of those metrics that are defined by Google, which they use as a signal for um, for their ranking. So I will use some acronyms <clears throat> in this presentation. And these are some of the different core vital metrics. So LCP, which is largest content for paint. Um, FID, first input delay. INP, interaction to next paint. And CLS, cumulative layout shift. Now, if you want to know what each one of these metrics are, um, you can go to these links. Um, the, there's a lot of information at these links. I'm not going to really explain what these metrics are. So that one, uh, I'm, I'm guessing is okay. You could do that on your own time. But assuming that you, you know what these metrics are, I will um, move on with the presentation. So here's what you can expect in this presentation. Um, I will explain like what are the different data sets for core vitals and a bit of an explanation of each. Um, I will walk through the difference between field data and lab data. I'll show you what you can achieve with this library. And also at the end, I will give a demo of an actual implementation of this library on a live site. Um, what not to expect is setting up the actual library in a site. So there's a video, which I will show you in, in a slide coming up, which will, uh, is a YouTube video. If you watch that video, it's, it's about one hour long. Um, it will walk you through exactly how I accomplish um, everything with setting up this library and getting everything to work, which you will see eventually in the demo. <clears throat> All right. so. First, you need to understand um, how the data is acquired and what these different data sets mean, right? So when you run, uh, so Chrome user experience report, um, this, is a, this is a public data set provided by Google, and this is captured from the Chrome web browser when you enable the setting to send anonymous um, statistics to Chrome, right? This is where it's captured. And so, and this is data that is publicly available, but it's only updated one, about once a month. Um, you can, in fact, query this data um, in BigQuery, and there's a link for that. Um, if you follow the link, it will explain how you can do that. So there's there's also page speed insights, which probably most of us know already. So this is a simulated environment where you could run a page and get the metrics for that page. But very important here is that this is a simulated environment, right? So it, it tries to mimic you know, a page loaded on a, on a 4G phone um, with certain browser requirements and so on. And when you run that in page speed, it gives you the metrics from the test and it also compares it with the Chrome user experience. So I'm going to just call it Crocs for short. So it compares the simulated metrics with the Crocs metrics. You could also set up page speed insights as a pipeline. So I, I, I've successfully done this in in a personal project of mine. So every time there is like a new feature you work on and then you create the MR, the pipeline will run and it will give you the metrics. And then you could compare and contrast, you know, did this is MR increase the metrics, lower the metrics or what, right? For me, that is really helpful to know because when it increases the metrics, then the pipeline is blocked at that point. And then I send it to um like a what I call like a call a vital engineer, which is me in that case. And then I try to figure out, okay, what they're actually trying to accomplish. 
and how is it affecting the core vitals and if we can get around it somehow, right? And if you do that, it will, you know, it will just ensure that your core vitals are, are at a certain threshold and you don't go over that, right? Google Search Console gives you data for your specific site. So if you sign up with Google Search Console, which is free, by the way, you can get some basic data for of your core web, core web vitals. Um, it kind of gives you like, like a summary of like a groups of pages. So if you have like in Drupal, you might have like a blog content type, right? And this is usually done by one blog template. So it will try to group all those blog articles into one like group and give it and give you the core vitals for that group. So if you improve one, if you improve your blog template, it will basically improve the entire group, right? And um, webvitals.js, this is a library now that if you install it on your site and set it up, you can get real time monitoring. So if you like deploy something, you can see instantaneously, like, you know, if how these metrics fluctuate, right? And it also gives you a more granular and, um, of, uh, view of, of your website metrics. For example, it can tell you for a specific URL, what is the div or the class or the ID that you know is that you need to target. And, and you will see that in the demo also. So with the web vitals.js, um, you send the data, you can send the data to Google Analytics. And then from there, you can you can connect your connect your Google Analytics to BigQuery. And you can visualize the data in BigQuery, but even better is that you can send it to Local Studio. And, and Google provides uh, like a local Local Studio template for you to use specifically for core vitals. So you just use that template and it gives you all the nice graphs and everything. <clears throat> so field data, um, there's field data and there's lab data. So field data is the historical report for URL over the course of time. So like a month, let's say, right? And this is this is uh, very important to understand because this is data from your actual users using like actual devices. So when you test like using Lighthouse on your Chrome web browser, you might get you know very good results because you use a very fast computer with a very fast Wi-Fi connection, right? And you might think, oh, my site is great, but then this is not what your users actually experience because they might be using a Wi-Fi, uh, sorry, a cellular phone. They might be passing through you know, like a tunnel, for example, and the Wi-Fi suddenly drops and then comes back and then the page restarts loading. So all sorts of variations there, right? So field data is, is a measurement, uh, aggregation of all of that. Um, the lab data is what you get from page speed insights, and this is a simulated data. So lab data will try to simulate what the most common user would experience. And if you fix things that you find in lab data, it will generally fix things and eventually for all, all the users. But it's just something very important to keep in mind that you might still miss things that your users are experiencing, but you might not experience, right? So the main difference between field data and lab data is that lab data is run on a single device on a single network on a, in a single location, while field data is run across you know, all devices, all networks, all locations for all your users, right? Um, the web dot dev link at the bottom will give you a very detailed explanation um, on the differences as well if you wanted to do further reading. So here's what you can accomplish with webvital.js, which is um, publicly available on GitHub. So you can send your CWV data, CWV data um, to a Google Analytics for property and don't think it works with the, anyway, it doesn't matter if it works with the old Google Analytics or not because the old Google Analytics doesn't work anymore. So it sends it to a GA4 property. Then you can connect it to BigQuery and pull that data in and then send it to Data Studio. Um, you can deploy a change to your production site and view your results in real time. So you don't need to wait a month to see if a change you made improved things or did not improve something. And then you can also find the exact causes of something that will affect your different CWV metrics, right? Um, INP, by the way, which is interaction to next paint, is a new metric that is still in, I think it's, they call it beta, 
uh, maybe I might be wrong on that, but it's a new metric and it's not officially a part of the ranking algorithm of Google, but it will be in March of next year. So it is good to like start working on that now. So when it actually becomes a ranking factor, you know, you're ahead of the game. For this, to set up Web Vitals at JS, you're gonna need a Google G a GA4 property, a Google Cloud project with BigQuery, a Chromium browser, any text editor, and some public website. Um, that is it really that you need. All right, so this was the video that I was talking about um, where it walks through how to set it up. Um, maybe Suchi can link this video in the final video for this channel, mm -hmm. but this will be linked somewhere. Um, so if you're really interested in setting up, I would highly advise that you take a look at this video because actually all the knowledge that I got was from this video. <clears throat> Sorry, didn't play it. And here is the code that, so this is just a regular JavaScript file that you include on all your pages. Um, I'm not sure if it's readable for you, but it basically imports the library um, and then sends, so the first few lines there will import the library. Then the second function there would send some, that is the function that sends it to Google Analytics and then you tell it what to send. And then, you know, the switch statement would send different um, parameters based on the different metrics. And then the, oops, and then the last, the last line here is important, G tag. Uh, this is actually what sends the data to Google Analytics. And then you call the function on CLS to send all of you, all of the data that you, that you gather. Now with this simple, like bunch of code here, you, you can achieve everything that I'm going to show you in this demo, right? Right, so assuming you did all of that, um, so this is a site that I manage here, classicbigs.com, and I've, I've run this test many times, and you can see that um, like the, the scores are all in the 90th percentile, at least for desktop. I'm still kind of like working on the mobile, but you can see that um, I am able to achieve a passing rating for CWB uh, metrics, and it's all in the 90th percentile. Now keep in mind this is this is lab data, right? So this is run on you know specific connection in a specific location. But the key thing here is to know that you see where it says core vitals assessment passed. That means it's it's passed for all users. So even for field data, it is also passing, right? <clears throat> all right. Um so if someone could give me a thumbs up if you can see some blank graphs. Okay, cool. So this is what it looks like in Looker Studio now. Um, there's a small bug in the template provided by Google. Every time you switch tabs here, you need to just reset the dates back to something because it defaults to 2021. I'm not sure why. But... So if we look at the metrics for like the last 28 days, for example. Now here you can see, um, now I know from, I know I made a change around the 18th of August, which is around this point in the graph. And you can see that when I made that change, uh, my my uh, LCP started dropping drastically. So you can see August 17th, it was kind of high. It was almost to the point where it needs improvement. And then after I made that change, like the 19th, which was the next day, I could immediately see that that change I made improved my LCP. If I didn't, if I wasn't using Web Vitals or JS, I would have to wait a whole month to see that data, right? And here you can see FID. I'm I'm doing pretty well on the FID and the CLS. I'm also doing pretty well on the CLS. And it, it it also gives you some more data like um how many users you have, how many sessions you have, and and record count, which is every time there's a LCP, FID, or CLS or IMP event that is sent to Google Analytics, it counts that as a record. So these are how many of those counts it, it did in the time frame. It doesn't actually like store every single every single count. It it does like a sampling, right? Under user analysis, again the bug is that it switches back to 2021. So you need to just flip it back to um 20. 
whatever we want here. So this one, I'm still trying to understand how to use this one. I'm, I'm by I'm by no means an expert in this, by the way, <laughs> but I'm still trying to figure out it is important information, but I'm not fully sure I understand how to interpret this information. But the way that I interpret it is I look for outliers. And this would be where the graph, and let's look at the blue, blue ones here, is where the graph has like a really long extension. So if you look, for example, tablet on for the device type of tablet. But one thing to notice is that I don't have a high, let me unclick that. So if you look at, I have an outlier for tablet, but also I don't have a high record count for tablet. So that's actually not, you know, a true outlier. Um, but you can see here that I have a lot of mobile users and okay, mobile and desktop are kind of like more or less the same there. But by the way, we are viewing LCP metrics right now. So, okay, this is a good example. So I can see here that on Android, Actually, no, this is not Android. It's what I was on, right? So if, let's just assume, right, that this long blue line was Android. And then you, I can see here that most of my record count came from Android. And then this value was really high. It was, you know, 3.62 for LCP. It means that there's some problem on Android devices that I need to look at. So I need to go, you know, simulate an Android device and try to figure out what's going on with the LCP. Right. So this is how you can really target which device or which operation system is actually causing the issue for your users, right? We flip the metrics to IMP. I'm trying to find an outlier, but I, I don't think I have much outliers. Uh, yeah, there's not, not much outliers here. Let's check FID. I'm doing pretty well on FID, so I don't expect to find any um, outliers for FID. Uh, nothing here as well. And let's check CLS. I'm also doing well on CSS, CLS. So let's see if I find anything. Um, okay, maybe there's some slight issue with going on on the desktop. I can see that the desktop is really is much higher than the others. Keeping in mind that 0 0.04 of a CLS value is, is really good score, by the way. So, I mean, if I really wanted to be, you know, stringent about this, I could target it, but the, the score is already passing. So I don't need to do much here. All right. So as I was saying, that is how I interpret this results. There might be other way to interpret this results that I don't know about. So this is still, you know, something to be discovered, more or less. The part that I really wanted to show you is page path analysis. This is where this is where the fun stuff happens, right? So I'm gonna switch that back to 30 days. Bye. So here is where it tells you exactly what page and what div on a page, right? So if we look at LCP, um, here's the score. And here I can see the path, right? And then here's the highest metrics for, for these paths. So I can tell right away that this div, whatever it is, has a really high, it's causing my LCP to be really high. So then I would go in my site, find that div, and then try to see what's going on, right? Um, you can actually like click on one of this and it will filter the debug target for that for that page. Well, there's no data there currently. Um, let's try another one. No data there as well. Um, there are there are metric sliders. So if you wanted to, you know, just show ones with just high um for high percentile ratings you can use these filters um there is also you can do a lot of sorting and exporting and so on with um with these graphs right but the main thing here is that this this for me the debug target is really like the creme de la creme of why i use this this library right i can see right here from the number one being the met the div with the highest that causes the highest, um, highest, let's say, problem on your site, right? And then I would start by targeting this one. When I fix number one, I will go to number two, try to figure out what's going on in number two, and then I will work my way down this list, right? 
and that is for LCTs. So I'm going to leave IMP for last as a special one. So I'm going to do FID. And again, here I can tell exactly what divs are contributing to my FID. Um, I can see here that I have something going on in uh, div, this div in the equipments dash terms class. So, you know, I could, now what is important here is that these divs might exist on your page, yes. But then sometimes when you test, you don't see certain divs for, and I'll give you a good example. Like when you have the cookie notice pop up, right? Because you might have saved that for like 30 days and it doesn't show for you, but it shows for everyone else. And that might be causing like a layout shift or something. And, that, and you will totally miss that. But this is where you will pick it up in the debug target, right? So you can see here that um, one of, well, it's not here anymore, but one of these divs was actually a, a cookie notice. And that is really like a popular thing that contributes to CLS and FID and so on. And this is how you could pick up those like those nitty gritty stuff, right? CLS, if we were to look at that one, now this site does pretty well on CLS, so there's nothing, there's no real work for me to do here. The, the scores are all all pretty good. Um, there's there's no there's there's in, in, in any information for the path because it doesn't even register. Um, now, IMP is a very interesting one. So I believe that I have not set up the IMP correctly in the JavaScript code that I showed you, which is why I'm getting null here. So I think something weird is going on there that I didn't do correctly or I just didn't understand something, but you should be seeing information in the debug target, which um, would allow you to target specific things. Um, IMP is the one of the hardest ones to actually fix because IMP measures how user interact with the site, you know, across the entire session of the page. So it's not just a first click, it could be like, it measures all of the events, I think it's clicks and scrolls and pointed down and maybe some others. It measures all of that and then it picks the highest one from that and that is your actual IMP score. It's almost, it's practically impossible to know what causes your IMP because you don't know what your users are doing on your site, right? But using this library, you can exactly um, target that. Uh, of course, you have to set it up properly so you actually get some values in here. So this is something that I need to still work on, um, but IMP is supported in the web vitals.js as far as I know. And then there is the, by the way, you can also like export these and share it as a, as a report to anyone on your team, right? Um, so the revenue analysis, I don't particularly use this for the site, but if you did have, um, your, if you did have revenue goals set up in your Google Analytics, this is where it would show up here and it would kind of show you when you made some change and your LCP dropped, then your maybe your revenue goal increased, right? So if you had like an e-commerce site, for example, this would make a lot of sense to use here. And you could, I didn't set it up for this site, as I said, but you can set it up so that you see uh, your your revenue goals aligning with your metrics and you can see how your revenue changes based on if the metrics go up or down, right? And uh, that is about it. Um, is there anything in this local studio that anyone wanted me to go back on or wanted to see again? Or I could take questions, I guess. <clears throat> so um I think that is the last slide. Yeah, that is that is the last slide. So that that was it. And I, I hope that um I hope that you got some kind of understanding of like why you would want to use web vitals.js um and how you can use it and the and the end results and that you can achieve um with it. I could take questions or I could go back and show something if anyone missed anything. All right, so if anyone doesn't have any questions, I could hand it back over to Suji. Sai is asking, do clients understand it? 
Sorry, can you say that again? Do clients understand it? Do clients understand it? Well, that is a video that I wanted to do, actually, because explaining Web Core Vitals to, to a non-technical person, you know, is like explaining rocket science to a baby. Because no one, if you're not a developer, you have no idea what these things mean. And you probably don't care what these things mean. And you also don't care to improve these things, right? But I plan to do a video that explains what these metrics mean for like non a non-technical audience. Um, so to answer your questions, the answer is no, clients definitely don't understand it and don't care about it. And probably even developers don't care about it. Some, at least some developers don't care about it. But yeah, I, I would um I, I would do a video eventually that explains what this means for your site, especially if you're not a developer. As one of my things on my list to do. Um, I did have a question, Javan, and um, <laughs> might show my naivety here, but just bear with me. Um, you were saying that you could put these tests and metrics inside the CI pipeline. So c could I assume when you say that, that if you make a change, like you said, and you make a merge request and, you know, it tests what was before and, and what, what is now after the merge, yeah. is, is, is it, is it, Am I right in assuming that would use the lab data rather than you know field data? And is there any problems with it using that sort of you know contrived or lab data? Yes, so it it does use it it does do a simulated test, so it's definitely lab data. So how how it works is that you set um, your thresholds in the pipeline, right? You for example, you can say that seventy five. And above is, is failure and 75 and below is, is, is a pass or whatever. And if your test, you know, goes above 75, then it fails the pipeline. If it goes below 75, it passes the pipeline. So you can set your thresholds. These results, th this is done by a, a lighthouse CI pipeline. So it's, it is done in a simulated environment. So the, the pipeline is all simulated data, um, but the maybe there might be a way to get web vitals data inside of the pipeline i don't know maybe but if that is possible that would actually be great but i haven't figured that part out yeah i guess like any automation that's in the in the pipeline is is good in terms of you know better than no automation i, I guess yeah, so, yeah. At, yeah at least you could tell like you could pick up things early you know you don't have to deploy and then realize after the fact that something broke or whatever we're not broke but something affected your metrics right so uh i i give you an, i give you an example uh of it's a very common example so like so the marketing marketing team might ask for to install some a b testing code for example because they want to test something right and then developers would go and do that install this javascript code on the site and then no one checks these scores but actually you you just added an entire JavaScript library to all of your pages and that affects all of the metrics, right? So if you did set up the pipeline and, and all of this stuff, that will be picked up at the point of the merge request. So at the point of the merge request, the pipeline will probably fail and be like, oh, well, this merge request causes your, you know, your LCP to fail, right? And then it should go to like a, like a like an engineer that then checks that to see well why is it failing and is well it's because you added an entire library right so maybe instead of you know calling the library from external maybe you could self-host the library or maybe you can just use a trimmed down version of the library at that point you will have to figure out ways around it right but at least the pipeline will pick it up at that point because most projects that I've seen you know it it just market and say they want that developers do it and it's out the window after that right Ivan uh, Tyler also had a question how does web vitals compare to Chrome's lighthouse so Chrome lighthouse is a simulated environment so that's lab data web vitals is field data so that's data from all of your users 
So sometimes you might see things passing in Lighthouse, but then it fails for all of your users and you might be trying to figure out why. And then it's almost impossible to figure out why because you don't know what your users are doing, right? So this is where the, the web vitals, the JS library would, could come in. So important to remember here is Chrome, uh, sorry, Lighthouse, which you can run from Chrome inspection tool, or you can run from Google PageSpeed Insights. It's all simulated data. All right. Uh, so do we have any more questions? Tyler is saying thanks, by the way. <laughs> sorry? Tyler is saying thanks. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm not able to see the chat. Okay. That's all good. Yeah. Um, okay. I'll just stop recording now.